Hello and welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, JVC LA100, belt drive, uh, semi-automatic uh, with a half inch mount cartridge. This one's missing a belt. Um, we're just going to give this one a general service. Uh, the owner is going to drop off a belt for me, but uh, one of the things that you will find if you buy one of these used tables um, is a very seized bearing. Um, I know it's hard for you to feel this, but this bearing is so tight that it barely moves. And it's like it is, but I don't even know how that platter turns, to be honest with you. But it is so tight. The grease in this bearing is very, very, very tight. So we're going to have to um, remove the bearing altogether and uh, remove it, the spindle from the bearing, clean the old grease, and uh, put some fresh oil in there. Also, clean, uh, we'll clean the controls if they're actually, yeah, that's electronic. Um, that's very scratchy. I know the arm works because if it hits stop, it will return, which is great. Man, that bearing's tight. So it does return, which is good. So let's uh, flip her upside down and get at her. Um, This one's not too bad for screws, so why don't we do this one together? Uh, the feet need to come off. That's a bit messy. This is a uh, this is kind of suspended turntable. Um, there's big springs here, so when you do put it down, uh, it'll absorb vibrations through those springs. But there's no actual felt pads on the feet. So usually what uh, I would do is put some, uh, you can buy those furniture pads, just the soft felt ones, or um, something uh, a little tackier like rubber or something so it doesn't slide around. We can do that. Uh, are we good here? Okay, I'm gonna flip it back. Pretty sure we're gonna have to remove the head shell. I haven't worked on one of these in a while, so I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah. This is kind of like that uh, that techniques I just worked on. The um, what was it? The uh, 1900, I think, where we actually have to remove the top like that. Oh, we got some wires. There is a power cable here that goes to the motor. And what else? Uh, looks like just the uh, RCA cables are attached to the back there. Hmm. I don't know if I want to pull this up or not. I think I can get at this bearing through these holes here. There's a ground cable. Three screws. I'm going to try not to remove that. If we don't have to disassemble it, then that's all better. There we go. And there is our bearing. I don't know if you can see that or not. Very crusty old grease in there. To do that, I'm gonna leave this like this, so hopefully you can see properly. We're gonna to have to remove this, uh, this C-clip here, or is it a C-clip? No, it's an E-clip. Grab a screwdriver. Remove that E-clip like that. 
It should come out now, I'm thinking. Or maybe not. Maybe we have to remove this gear. Well, I'm thinking we're going to have to remove that gear. Maybe what we can do is just push down on it and push the bearing up and out. You're, you're learning with me. I haven't done one of these in a long time. <clears throat> no. Hmm. Of course, it could also be the, uh, the frozen grease here. I think what we're going to do is uh, let's let's apply a little heat to that. Not too hot, but uh, we don't want to melt that plastic. We're going to just heat it up, see if we can uh, get it moving. It's already spinning a lot better. The question is, can we get this black gear off? I'm pretty sure it's a press fit, and there's um, some notches there. So it's just a matter of uh, giving it a couple shots. It sits in a little puddle of uh, grease and oil. Um, there's like a plastic base there. There we go. It worked this time. So a little bit of heat to get you going here. What you don't want to do is do not get a pair of pliers, okay? Get in here and wrench this off. You're going to destroy the bearing, okay? So don't, don't do that. Uh, let's grab a paper towel. I'm already getting grease on me. If there's one thing you've learned from watching my channel is that I would say 80% of the problems with turntables of this vintage are grease, old lubricants, okay? It's, 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 it's getting cool now, it's already getting stiff again. So let's, uh, let's give it another shot of heat. See if we can pull this out. Got her. And there we go. And there's your black uh, gear, which goes up like that. And here is your gummed up spindle. All right, so we're gonna clean that with alcohol. If you hear some dribbling in the background, that's my sump pump. Uh, it's starting to melt here. We're up to about five degrees Celsius today here. We did have uh, received quite a bit of snow in the past few weeks. It's really piled up out there. So we're starting to get some melting and uh, my house kind of sits on the side of a hill. So I get quite a bit of uh, rainwater and or snow melt here. So. That's what you're hearing in the background, sorry. So there we go, nice clean spindle. All right, let's set that aside. Let's put it on the plastic. Okay, so now we'll take care of the actual bearing itself. Uh, Q-tip for that and alcohol. You can use WD-40 as well, not as a lubricant, but as the cleaner. It's melting pretty good today. You 
and I cleaned out nicely. Just uh, dry it up. Oh, there goes the sump pump. So even without any oil now, it's spinning nicely. Okay. So, what are we going to do to lubricate this? For these types of really tight bearings like this, I'm going to go with that 3-in-1 um, uh, oil that I do motors with. It's not the thinnest oil I have, but I do not want to use the 30 weight on this one. So we're just going to put a little bit of oil here, a little bit of oil here. You don't need a lot. Put our bearing in. Okay, let's work it back and forth a little bit. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Perfect. We're going to press our gear back on. There has to be a little bit of play. Of course, I have, oops, I have to get it in. I may have to pause because I might have to use a tool to do this. I don't know if my fingers are strong enough to do it or not. No, oh, here we go. Nice. So what you want to do is you just want to put it up high enough that the E-clip has room to fit in. back on. This gear is for the auto return. All right, so you're also going to want to clean this plastic bearing here, just a little bit of uh, alcohol. And we're going to apply a little dab of synthetic grease down there. Like that. And a little bit here for good measure. And we'll put our bearing back in. There we go. Perfect. This one has a ground connection. Tighten it down nicely. Not too crazy because those are plastic mounts. So just snug it up and look at that. Look at that. Much better. So other than that, 
there's really not a hell of a lot to do on this turntable. It needs a belt. So what I'm going to do, we'll lubricate the main motor. There's nothing here, nothing here. This is an easy one. So reattach your power connector. Swing your arm over. Put your base back on. Throw your lid back on. And flip it over. And it's just the four, the four screws for the feet here. One. Okay, we're going to oil our main motor. There's your main motor. A little bit of 3 in 1 oil. Again, a couple drops on the spindle underneath. And just want that to drip into the motor. Okay. And it's going to wick its way in. You can plug the turntable in and just move the arm out to distribute the oil. There we go. And you see it spinning there. Uh, this turntable is factory set speed. There are no pitch controls. And unfortunately, I don't have a belt yet for it, but to set the speed, you're going to need um, either a uh, smartphone with a, a turntable RPM app, or you can get yourself a strobe, okay? And uh, there's your, uh, your, yep, there's two pots in there, one for 45, one for, for, for thir uh, one for 45, and one for 33, okay? Just gonna check uh, if auto returns working. Head shell back on. Yep, motor shuts off. Let's do that again. Nice. It's working great. Not the quietest motor in the world, but it might need a couple applications of oil just to quiet it down a little bit. Also, when you put the belt on there, it absorbs a lot of the noise from the motor, so. Good. And you can see how this uh, turntable is slightly suspended. That's from those big springs underneath. That's about it for this one. Um, needs a belt. Um, I'm going to clean the stylus, have a look at it, set the counterweight and the anti-skating. You've seen me do that before. Um, we didn't check the cueing. Looks good. Nice and slow. So cueing's fine. I guess this turntable, the owner said it's been sitting in a closet for like 30 years.
So that's not too bad for 30 years. JVC made pretty decent stuff. They really did. Um, their turntables look a lot like uh, Techniques tables. Um, pretty similar in construction as well. But uh, this, they're, they're good tables. Uh, you know, now that this bearing is fixed, you're not going to have any issues with it spinning. The motor won't be working hard. So uh, should be uh, good to go for a few years. Anyway, that's a fast one. Okay, that's how you uh, how you uh, lubricate, clean your uh, belt drive style bearing and spindle on a JVC. Alrighty. So uh, we will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.